was jumping on the back of his, his neck with his foot with their knee, holding him down in such a way that he cut off his windpipe and asphyxiated, as far as we know. Although I must admit, we have not received the pathology report or the pathology report. We, in fact, ourselves um, uh, had a second autopsy uh, performed. Uh, we haven't got the results back from that. But given what we know, that we had a healthy young man in his mother's arms, the police grabbed him, they themselves, through the conduct that they engaged in, stuffed his life out of him. That, to me, is a violation, not only of his civil rights, but it's a gift of violation of humanity, frankly. And at this day and age, it's hard to accept as legitimate police conduct. So our family here, and I'm glad all of you are here in support. Many of you I've seen before, many of you I've been involved with on a routine, on a daily basis. Some of you have had cases very similar to this. We're involved in another case, I understand it, but this is exactly what like this. And that is where a person needs help, and instead of giving them help, you kill the person. That's uncomfortable. So that's why we're here. And the family is traumatized. And, and I, maybe you do not know, but this took place in the presence of the mom and the sister. So all of you, many of you obviously moms, you can appreciate the pain that the mom with her feeling and witnessing her son being snatched from her bosom and thrown to the ground and die in her presence by the police officer. And so we filed claims on behalf of the mom, on behalf of the sister, and the wrongful death against uh, Mr. Corp from Mr. Aquino. And so that's where we are uh, right now. Uh, uh, we are uh, going to move forward. You can see the part that, that we have here that says, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. And you, it reminds you, obviously, of Mary Garner, who said, I can't breathe. This is even more dramatic than that, because he said, please don't kill me before his breath was taken away. And he's on the ground, on the floor, in the house, in the bedroom, when they actually put him down, when they finally turned him over, blood was flowing from him. This was a healthy person before, no physical problems, and within moments, his life is gone. That is why we are here and why we're so traumatized by it. Many of you know about a number of other cases that have taken place. This certainly falls within one of the as egregious of cases you can have. Not because the physical conduct was brutal, like we have in cases where people have been shot unnecessarily or beaten to death. This is a situation where it was more subtle than that. It was more the George Floyd, where they put the foot, the knee, on the back of his neck and pressed down for about five minutes and snuffed his life out. And then painted ignorance of it all, as if they had nothing to do with it. Then it was a medical emergency of some kind. The medical emergency was created after they had killed him, so they didn't really know that he was dead yet. So that is part of what we're, we're dealing with here. I want to see some of the pictures here. The family will talk a little bit about him as a young man. These are his presents, not open from Christmas. So he was, he was a wonderful, loving young boy, young man, as you can see. His family loves him. All of them are here, many of them are here. And this is his presence that hasn't been open. So the trauma and the damage that has taken place in his family is immeasurable. Many of you know what that's like, but it clearly is immeasurable. Okay, before I take questions, though, what I'm going to do is Ben, who's an associate on the case, will talk. Then we'll have the family uh, member talk. The community people talk, and then I will answer questions. Uh, well, yes, okay? Well, before I take any questions, let's just finish up the show. Ben, take it. So, as you've heard, can you give us your name? Before yes, we... sure. My name is Ben Nissenbaum, and I work with Mr. Burris, and I've worked there for a long time, as many of you know. So as you've heard, Angelo was suffering from a mental health emergency, and that's what caused the police to be called. But there were two emergencies that happened here. The first was Angelo's mental health emergency, then the police, and the police became a medical emergency for Mr. Quinto. Mr. Quinto was suffering a mental health emergency, and the police killed him. As Mr. Burris said, they snuffed the life out of him. And we know that. We've had our own examination done, we're very comfortable that that happens. All the indicators of an asphyxiation death appear to be present. 
So we are deeply concerned that the city of Antioch not only has not really addressed this case, but at the training that's involved here, whether the officers followed it, apparently they, they did not. We also have video of Angelo in life, and you'll see the thoughtful young man that he was. This was not a situation, does not appear to be a situation where drugs were involved. This is, a, and even if they were, this is a situation about saving somebody's life and then you kill them. Right. How is that right. possible? You know, police need to do a better job than this. And, and sometimes you hear police come out and say, oh, well, it was excited delirium. You suffered from some syndrome that doesn't even really exist in reality. Well, every time they say that, they do a disservice to their own job because it is a direct contradiction to learning how to do their job better. Instead of accepting responsibility, they keep being ignorant. We can't allow that anymore. So now what I'd like to do uh, is start having some of the family. First person I want to bring up is his sister who is also present in this month. <clears throat> This fellow, she's 18. I don't really know what to say, but um, my family is not unique. This incident is not unique. It's happened to a lot of people. We've seen the position that the officers took kill people before. And my mom and I trusted them too much because the violence and brutality that we saw did not come in the form of guns or blatant eating. It was it was um, the human form of excessive restraint and a dangerous tactic used to harm people. I have to um, you, you want, I, well, I want to bring him back, but if we can't do that, we want justice in any way we can get it. Um, we want a new number to call, someone who can help us mental health crises and other related domestic incidents and we want to question the, the police code that they use and hopefully get it banned here. That's right. Good job, sisters. We're here with you. We're with you. Yeah. to get us to play the latest video game that he was looking at. He loved to fish and scuba dive. And um, we try to see, get us to see graffiti in a different way. He was always questioning the way we saw things and, and trying to share his passion for many things. Um, Angelo was, there was a real soft side for Angelo. He was particularly good with kids where he always had a smile on his face and the patients for them, uh, middle kids especially, and he loved animals. Uh, he rescued our now 14-year-old cat from a garbage can. And she was uh, two years old, uh, named their keeper, which she thought was a male, and, uh, and loved her ever since. Um, our dog, Toto, it's Angela who spoiled uh, him uh, arguably way too much. <laughs> um, he had a lot to live for. 
Um, you know, when Isabella called 911, she was looking for help. Um, she had no idea that she was engaging in a system that's broken and unable to regulate itself and investigate itself. Um, a system that, although there are good cops, of course, um, a system that often treats poor people and people of color, either native, black, Asian, Latino, as if they are guilty first and then have to be found innocent later. A system that, when there's a misstep, tends to cover up itself and come in on itself and begin to change the facts and obfuscate the facts and prevent truth from coming out to preserve the status quo and to prevent changes from happening. Um, you know, what we're asking for sometimes, and, and, and hopefully in this case we won't have, hasn't happened yet, but won't have the POA after all that coming in and then threatening politicians with any changes that could come. Even when some of those changes are changes that in other jurisdictions have been known as just best practices, things that are not revolutionary, but in more progressive cities have worked and have worked well. So we need to move to a place where those things are actually taken care of. You know, the family is really asking for a few things here. Uh, number one is um, we'd like to know if the police have body cams and if they're turned on. And if they didn't have body cams, I think the question for the community is why not? Um, and if we do pass a law that says they have to have body cams, they should not be able to turn them off. Uh, Number two is we're still waiting for blood samples to run a toxicology report. I saw one in the hospital originally that showed nothing, but we haven't gotten to the blood samples as far as I know to be able to do the second one. And um, we'd like to know who the officers were, what, what their that's records right. were, and if that's something that we have a problem with, uh, that, that's an ongoing problem, or is that one day thing, and yeah. we can solve it through training or what have you. Um, right. You know, ultimately, Angela's life would be lost in vain if we cannot work with others. And, and I want to say thank you to all of you who are here, other families that are in similar situations uh, as us. It has been amazing to be a part of this club of people who have lost, and I had no idea how many people that encompassed. Uh, but thank you for being here. Ultimately, Angela's life will have been lost in vain if we cannot work towards some reform so that others do not have to face the same situation. That's right. Thank you. Um, and don't be in vain. I was going to ask many times on that fateful night, December 23rd, half an hour before Noche Buena, but it's a Filipino holiday. She asked the officers, a couple times at least, what number should I have called? Right. Is there a better number to call? And they answered, all of them answered, no. You did the right thing. That is the only number you can call. So the answer was no, but I think as Senator Chavez would say, si se puede. Right. We can do it. We That's can right. make that answer be yes. yes. There yes. can be a number you can call. Nine, eight, something eight. that yes. is staffed with enough resources so that they can come out 24-7, you know, all the time. Other jurisdictions have done it. Eugene has done it. Denver's done it. I don't know why we have to be that regressive. And so it's not an anti-cop thing. It's about, you know, it makes sense for the city of Antioch to have a police force that actually works well. It's cheaper. Right. It's very expensive to do things wrong. Um, it's also not effective. So the last thing I would say is that as a community, I think what I see is what we're asking for is that instead of subjugation and, um, and constraining somebody and dehumanizing them, what we're really asking for is a change that respects each and all, every one of us as a human being as a member of the community, and that um, we go beyond the idea of domination as a way of policing, dominating the subject, to respecting that subject, and showing respect for the community you serve, and putting those interests of the community above the personal interests of the officers that are serving. That's what it means to provide public service. That's right. And so for that, um, we will strive. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, David. Uh, I have comments from the rest of the community members. I wanted to show you a portion of a case. Your mom was 
saw that her son was down with boots were on, and she then tried to videotape it. And it's a portion of a video, but it also gives you some sense about what happened at that moment that she is the mom who was witnessing in terms of the happening for something. Yeah, and I can set up over here. I think we have it there as well, but we did a new reenactment to show the positioning of Angelo and police. The first is the positioning that he was with his mom, the way she was holding him, and the way he was pulled from her, and then placed on the floor, and then the officer on time. We have that as well. Tilted down to the head to catch what's on. Okay, so the first section, this is all in one file. I will, absolutely. And I'll move out of the way as well. Took it towards the keyboard. Yeah, more. Okay. Uh, really we, we can distribute that yeah. for sure. All right. And so what I'll do, so this first portion is the uh, video, and it goes, I think, to about two minutes and 19 seconds or so. Yeah. What, what, what happened? Hello. Hello. I, not that I have. Come on, come on, can you take him, please? Please, please. What happened? Have a pulse? What's what's oh, happening? Huh? I'm not sure. You didn't see him take anything? I don't know. Help them out if you got no. No illegal drugs? I have no idea. Basically, what I said. I came from work. I came home. He was sleeping. Which was his room? It's that one. Oh my God. Seriously? No, no, no. I, I sit here. I sit here. No, no, no. I think it's you guys' flashlight. What, what am I going to know? We're going to talk to you. And uh, make comments to the effect of how strong the mom is, how strong the mom is. And, uh, uh, okay. So that's the uh, video. And then we have a reenactment here, which, as you saw, just began. And this is a uh, obviously a reenactment of what the family witnessed. And of course it's not a hundred percent, it's not a hundred percent recreation, but a reenactment. This happened in the bedroom. Right, in the same location in this house, inside. 
right after Mr. Collins was being held. The angel was not saying anything. So then you then police officer then pulled him. Picked him up, yes. And then he says, we spoke to him. Yeah, yeah, he goes right to the floor, right to the floor. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. He's down. He's turned. Oh, yes, so, like that. Like so now what we have is a knee on his back, the neck, head. What did the handcuff mean? Hold on. And the handcuff, the handcuff. Yeah. and then they put a hold on here. You have the hands, and, you got the, uh, and then you have the knee, and that, go back a little bit more, go back, you know, right in there. Okay, okay is that it? Yeah. That's it? Yes. And, yeah. This is basically the position. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's, yeah. and this position is held yeah. for at least from four and a half, maybe four and a half to five minutes, and then when they get up, they turn to the side, you notice he's bleeding. Mom makes a statement to the effect that uh, is he all right? You know, where's that? Yeah, yeah. So then he's there. He's handcuffed. The police, uh, paramedics. If somebody makes a comment. Is he dead? And the paramedics come. And that's the position he was in. Yeah. Now, uh, Angelo never regained consciousness while he was being. Held down on the floor. Uh, there were some sort of noises, almost guttural, as if he was going through a process. But he never spoke. He wasn't fighting. He wasn't resisting. He wasn't verbally resisting. He wasn't saying anything. And he wasn't attacking, kicking his feet, swinging his arms. His arms were handcuffed, you know, and his legs were pushed up. But he himself uh, was in a more submissive uh, form. Uh, this is after he had said twice, please don't kill me. So that's why it's so disturbing uh, that he clearly was a person in need of help. The family said that uh, that night he was acting uh, if he didn't want to be left alone. He was, you know, asking the same things and saying things that seemed like he was mentally, mentally uh, emotionally distressed and maybe paranoid at the time, although there had not been a formal diagnosis. But he had been acting sort of strange uh, and mental, as they say, for several months before. But not long. So that's uh, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. So not long before this, maybe a month, maybe two months, police had been called and on a uh, really on what became 5150, and they recognized uh, this this house in the response to it as having been related to that prior incident, and so they understood. That, that Mr. Quinto was suffering from a mental health emergency because who wouldn't? Because if he had one a couple months before, then obviously that's what's going on here again, right? That's the only reasonable explanation to come to. As you heard, the family saw a toxicology screen which showed no common drugs in his system. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have as well is we have a still photo that was taken of the officer's restraint. And again, you guys will get copies of all this. Uh, that was taken by Mr. Quinto's sister, and I have that up here. And you can see where the officer's knee and leg positioning is relative to, to Mr. Quinto's neck and shoulder area. And and again, there's significant bruising on his body in, in particular areas related to that. To show that he was not a danger or even being aggressive, he was being held by his mom against her chest, his chest, chest to chest, he's hugging him. The police came in, they didn't know who was in trouble. He didn't know if it was the mom that was hurting him or he was hurting the mom. That showed that it wasn't an aggressive thing and they even commented about how strong she was. Wow. So from that point to physically grabbing him and throwing him on the floor and him winding up dead uh, is just uncomfortable. Yeah. So, uh, let me do this here. Um, good afternoon or good morning. Uh, my name is Diana Collins Wente. I am uh, one of uh, Angelo's um, aunts. And um, sorry, I had to write this down. Um, I could spend hours. 
uh, speaking about Angela, about who he was. I could spend hours talking with him as a child, uh, the way that he um, thought about the world, uh, his dreams. He would make a discovery, and then he would look over and give you a wide smile and a pause, usually followed by a laugh. My mom could not be here with us today, so I want to share with you some of her words. Angela was my grandson. He called me Tita Tony. My husband and I met Angela, his brother, and the rest of the family in the Philippines when he was nine years old. He was a sweet, well-mannered little boy. Next, he came to the U.S. He had jobs, dreams, ideas. He and I cooked together occasionally. Then he was excited about joining the military. Later, the horrible news. He was fighting for his life at the ICU. He lost the battle a day after Christmas. So many dreams interrupted. No more goodbyes. So sorry, I will miss you today. As is the experience of so many families in this situation, as we grieve and grapple with this terrible loss, we are also charged with finding a way to move forward and honor Angela's life and the lives of so many others who have died under similar circumstances. We're moving forward and seeking justice for his death and joining the movement of families and communities pursuing fundamental changes to the structures of law enforcement and the systems that allow for our young men of color to be killed instead of cared for. Right. We are so very grateful for the outpouring of support and love from our communities, and we have been surrounded by it both near and far. We especially want to thank the folks who have been able to join us here today in person, and especially the families, including Con Hall, the mother of Miles Hall, Aunt B and Uncle Bobby, Oscar Grant's aunt and uncle, Rick Bettis, father father of Petey Bettis, Rickham, Catherine Wade, mother of Milan Baldwin, and Frank Sterling. Uh, we will continue to be joined with you in this in this effort. Thank you. Good morning. My name is David Hochschild. I'm a friend of the family. I've known Angela for 20 years. Going to his funeral was the toughest funeral I've ever been to in my life. Because Angela should still be alive. Your son, your brother should still be alive. There was no threat of violence. There was no violence. There was no weapon. There were no drugs. There was no reason for this to happen. I'm angry about that. That's, That's right. not okay. That's, right. That's not, not, okay not okay in our country. That's right. But we need to transform a violent act on the behalf of the police into an unstoppable force for change. You have joined a club that nobody wants to be a part of. That's right. And we don't want there to be a single other member of that club ever. That's right. I want to thank all the families from the other um, victims who are here with us in solidarity. And I just want to say, um, as a white man, I don't think this would happen to somebody who looked like me. That's not okay. And so um, I'm all in. We're going to be relentless be until relentless. we get justice. That's right. Hello, my name is Elias T. Can you guys hear me through this mask? Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. So, Angela was my best friend for the better part of almost two decades. Wow. And uh, it's tough for me to even think about what to say right now, but the recurring theme in my mind as I was driving up here was accountability. That part. When I, when I spent time with Angelo, I mean, he, he wasn't perfect. He had his ups and downs. But he had this recurring energy and good spirit related to self-accountability. He would have problems with, you know, relationship problems, like we all go through, right? And we would talk through it. And, you know, he'd be open to reflecting on, on his part in miscommunication, reflecting in his part on lack of empathy. So he had this spirit of like, oh, maybe I should be a better listener. Maybe I should be a better partner. Maybe I should be a better communicator. Uh, he also had that same level of self-accountability when it came to his passion. He loved exploring 
artistic endeavors. He loved day trading. He loved stock investing. All of these things encompass the spirit of accountability that that he embodied. He loved gaming as well. Like he just he loved all of these different things, and all of these were a mechanism for him to explore and and self actualize. And I find it so ironic that someone who embodied the spirit of self accountability was killed by a system that does not have that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I agree that this is a club that no one wants to be a part of, but I hope that this instance and the instances prior will further, further encourage our legislators, uh, our, our police force to reflect on how can they better hold themselves accountable, and if they can't do it, get them out of here. That's All right. That part. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Very, very thoughtful. And I think it, it speaks well to who Angela was and his family and the friends that he had. I want to bring on uh, Tom Hall now. Uh, many of you know that her son was tragically killed uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, at the same time, was suffering from a mental disorder. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, as the family said, I mean, this is not a club that you expect to be in, you plan to be in. All you're doing is trying to get your loved ones help. And that's exactly what happened with our son, Alana Creek. Even, with you, even when the officers know they have a mental illness, they still come with guns. And that is that can't happen. And this is another extreme example of why we cannot call 911. 911 is not the end all be all. The police are not the end all be all. We need to have a non police response to the mentally ill. So that's what we're, we're asking for in Contra Costa County is a, um, exactly that a 24, a non police response. But another thing that we need, and there's legislation actually being drafted right now that Angelo's sister could have called 988, and 988 would have been the right resource. They would have had the trained people on the other side of uh, on the other line to tell her what to do or to get the right people involved. The police come; they come with guns. They don't come with compassion. They come and they're aggressive. They're pulling Angelo away from his family when all he needed was care and compassion. And talk to him, and just he didn't even need to be de-escalated. There was no de-escalation needed. So what the what what's going on? So the Miles Hall Foundation, which we created in, our, in my son's honor, is exactly exactly what she said. What do I need to do? We need the education. We can't call the police when they're not they're not trained to do so. They don't have enough training. So I'm we sit in solidarity. We are with you. We love you. You're not alone. And and, and Angelo's death will not be in vain. Just as Miles Hall and Petey and so many others. Thank you so much. I'm Gigi Crowder and I'm the executive director of the NAMI here in Contra Costa County. When I got the call about Miles, I had just returned from PES for a family member myself. And I was so upset by the fact that Tom had come to our agency to get the education. And I failed to tell her one thing, because Miles is African-American, you can't call the cops. Mm -hmm. You have to address this different because when it's a person of color, too often the outcome is that they end up dead. That should not be. I took a proclamation to the board of supervisors in this county to get for the African-American community. And they thought about whether we should have language that says excessive force. They thought about it. Oh, not here, not in this county. These are the stories you're hearing about. There's many more when they're people of color. I have staff who have been armed and have walked away without a scratch. There's racism, it's, 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 there's biases, there's prejudices. We created a brochure because I want to make sure this never happened again. If you go out and visit a family and you wind up not taking the individual, leave resources with the family. I presented that in the summer to every police department there was. 
His mom should have gotten one of those brochures. She could have picked up the phone and called us. We have staff from her community who could have worked with her. Why are we ignoring what's really happening and making excuses when they did it? If this happened on December 23rd, why are we just not now here? Why are we now now just showing up? We, this should have been an immediate response. The county should take responsibility. I do not want to find out that those officers went back to work after they killed this young man. You don't go back to work after you take someone's life. You're not healthy enough to do that. You can't dehumanize individuals by normalizing death. You can't do it. And people who live with mental illness are suffering. You shouldn't be calling for people hired to protect and serve and then end up making funeral arrangements days later. That, that Nothing about that makes sense. I am standing with you, family. I am a ride or die type person. I do not care about what people think about me. That's their business. I'm there for you. Thank you. Antioch is not new to this. I just want to share this really quick. Uh, Raheem Buckus, I believe his name was. Rux. Rux. Uh, called 911 on June 25th, 2015, to report that he was experiencing hallucination. But when the police arrived, they handcuffed him. They held him down in the dirt while he cried out that I couldn't breathe. He couldn't breathe. And of course, he died. So this is not a new, isolated situation, especially here in Antioch. No, it's not. Now, there is no horror more horrific than witnessing your loved one being murdered. That horror is forever etched in your memory. And the reason why it's forever etched in your memory is because it could have been prevented. Yes, it could have been. The power of the police to use deadly force is one of the most significant responsibilities we can give any public official. That responsibility must be guided by common sense legislation that protects human rights and save human life. Common sense legislation that got to address this mental issue of police coming to deal with young men and women, people of color, in a crisis, as Tom spoke about. And I'll end with this. Families United for Justice, many families in this state has been going back and forth to the state legislators advocating for legislation to be passed and we've had some success. So this will have some success. Success. Thank you, John, for bringing much more attention to this mental issue. And again, from us, Oscar Grant family, our condolences are with you and we're standing with you. Before I, uh, before I take questions, I, I must have Petey's uh, from here. Come on, Petey's daddy. Come on, Petey's daddy. Years ago. Petey's yeah. the vet. I mean, the son. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah, I, 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 Riley, you got to say Petey's name. That's right. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the painful, most painful part for me is uh, seeing my wife cry every day. She was our only child, period. Mm -hmm. Um. And and then like I remember the first day I met Tom and the pain in her eyes and, and Angela's mother here the pain in her eyes it's just it's it's an ugly thing. And um you know um in in the city of Richmond is where my son was killed, was murdered by the police. Um we did we do have a, a police commission there, the only one I believe in Contrast County. And um, and they ruled that the cops' uh, testimonies were inconsistent with uh, the evidence and, and how the cop lied and all that stuff. Yet the, the city don't recognize that authority for for nothing. So um, you know, just being here for me is uh, we need to uh, restore integrity in policing. We, they um, are, are intelligent policing as well. They. They just continue to come up and, and slam people to the ground for 
any reason, mental health or just because they don't know what's going on and that's how they secure it. And that's disrespectful to everybody. And then they do the ultimate and they take their life from them. That's just not acceptable. So I'm uh, glad to see a lot of people here and a lot of uh, familiar faces. Uh, we got to put an end to this. We got to change more laws. We've changed a couple. I uh, appreciate Uncle Bobby always uh, striving to change these laws. And, and I know all you guys will be alongside with us. So uh, thanks for listening to me. By the recent speaker, is the case and incident can be more than that. That there's opportunity to change and to move forward in a socially progressive way. Every case has that opportunity uh, to bring about social reform, to bring about uh, additional issues, and to dramatize those issues. Every case presents an opportunity for public change. And so I see that here. All of you, many of you know that I feel very strongly about those kinds of issues. And we have seen changes down through the last number, number of years from an individual case that starts like this, starts in a horrific way where everyone, uh, someone has been killed unconsciously under circumstances that are unjustified. But the community rises up uh, and, and people of goodwill uh, go forward and, and make the challenge and challenge because you have to challenge the people in authority. You have to make them uncomfortable. And you only can do that they ask you for the question, as they always say, as John, John Lewis would say, you know, make good trouble. And that's what we plan to do here. So, so what I'd like to do now is, uh, in the media, people have any questions for me or any family member, please uh, come on. Um, try to yell it. Yeah. Say it. <laughs> um, it looked like in the video that the police uh, tried to provide life saving procedures. Is uh, Chief Brooks claiming that this is not an in custody death? I don't really know what he is claiming, and I don't care what he's claiming. That's so, I, to be honest That's with you, I don't really, be, so you know, I don't really care what police have to say about this. Okay? Right. Right. You know, right. They're lies. Right. 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 We wouldn't be here if we're telling the truth, because we're here telling the truth. I mean, right. they have and if they're telling the truth, I wouldn't be. Okay, right. so I, I don't care too much. What I have is what our clients have said. We know the young man's dead. There's a consequence from police activity, uh, placed on the ground, blah, blah, blah on the floor uh, and uh, and the young man saying, please don't kill me. And he was in fact killed. So that's what the issue is from my point of view. If they were telling the truth, right. Angelo would be here. Right. right. Angelo wouldn't right. be dead right. if they were telling right. the truth. Right. Or employ proper technique. Exactly. Right. For using that voice, common situation, uh, as opposed to being dressly and snatching from this mother person. All they mm -hmm. have to do is follow the rules. Yes, yes. You said you filed suit this morning and no, then filed a claim. Uh, filed a claim. Can you go into more about what that claim is? We'll have copies, limited number of copies of the claim here. Uh, I filed it this morning. Uh, what it is is a, a government code claim form which uh, preserves the state law causes of action, which are required to file within a period of six months. So things like battery, wrongful death, negligence intentional infliction of emotional distress and negligent infliction of emotional distress. And what that is, is a claim where where a person's loved one is is harmed in their presence and they're aware of it, which is certainly the case here with the mom and the sister who were right there when everything was happening. So they have their own separate claims for that as well. In the essence of it, it's a wrongful death. Wrongful death. My life was taken wrongfully. And violation of the civil rights and the state constitution will do the federal things later. But the essence of it is a person's life was taken wrongfully in violation of the law, and the mother and sister who saw it, their rights as uh, related to him were violated as well. So that's, that's the essence of it. Okay? Now they have 45 days to respond to this starting today. And once they, you know, what typically happens is that they have their 45 days, and when that's finished, we then will file a federal lawsuit. You know, with letting federal civil rights violations incorporate the state uh, uh, transactions as well. This is a problem. This is a situation to start the process. So that's what we we've done here. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Were the officers wearing body cams? As far as we know, they were not. Antioch doesn't have them. They don't want them. Oh no, no, you have a question already. Somebody else. Are they wearing body cams? I don't have the name. Not yet. We've uh, we've asked that. 
we have reduced that. We've asked for reports. They've given us nothing so far. Mm -hmm. so what's your response to not getting anything? Right. Okay. Uh, what's your our response, response to is, not getting response, anything? Our response is, did they tell anybody that this even happened? No. So, well, I mean, it's suspicious. We're going to get all of that. That's what the legal process is about. That's, yeah. that's why we I prefer that way, because you're going to get what you're entitled to get under the law, and you're entitled to get everything else. I will say this. From a community point of view, the community itself should be active. The various organizations are here. They should be acting and right. in, in, in bringing attention and mm -hmm. challenges to the department That's right. itself. That should happen. That's it. That's it. Because the law is one way to handle it, but the other way to handle it is community pressure. Mm -hmm. And politicians, as you know, respond yeah. to community pressure. So I encourage activity. You know, I mean, Tom Hall is an example, and, and, and Uncle Bob and them have all been aggressive in bringing these attention either to the right. state or to the local community. We've been involved in a lot of cases that way. And then sometimes the lawyers are in a position to to incorporate the reforms through litigation. So litigation is not the only way to go. Mm -hmm. Community pressure, mm -hmm. really, community support, mm -hmm. because politicians mm -hmm. will listen to numbers. They will listen to averages. So uh, all be, power be to involved. The people. You know, all power, all to, power, the people. power to the people. And really, there's something to be said for that. The power in the people itself. Right. Okay? Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Maybe one on one. I mean, we do some one on one. Talk to some of the family members. Oh, the family. Yes. Yeah. Family, family, family can talk to them. Yeah. Well, but one on one. Not yeah. to, not well, they, how do they want to do it? They can do it. Okay. If they want to be present, you are. If they don't, that's fine. Okay. Well, that's uh, one other thing we're going to do. We're going to play a video. Sure. I have a video of a Mr. Quinto Rivera. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, he's gotten some bad news, as you see in this video that he had put on Facebook uh, about his potential career in the Navy that he had sought. And uh, it's a long video. Uh, I'll send you guys links for it, but I'll play a couple minutes of it just so you get a sense of really who he was in life. Is there audio to it? There is. Is that good? Okay. Last time I did one of these video lives, that's the most you know how. That's his fault. I guess it's got some things. Well, I have left the Bay Area because I was dealing with a lot of my own stuff. My own personal issues. Uh, I got too intense for me. So I left. And I left all the creativity. Well, at least I feel like that. And now I feel like I'm coming back to my own. I guess I can go away. I'm trying to take my time to uh, spend my time into something creative, making something more something creative, being more productive. I'm trying to keep my mind clear, trying to keep myself going. And let's go back to when I left and what I left. Um, I was in game development. I was heading to art. So uh, a lot of people that we follow the town is always going to see them. Oh, it's such a, it's such a good time. And they helped me be more creative. I feel like it brought out a lot of things that I didn't know I had. But I spent so much time doing that. But then I didn't really have any time to really create because my type of work requires isolation. And I wasn't ready for it. Um, so I just kind of mustered up the strength of the Bay Area. And, 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 
tried to join the Navy. Uh, that, that was going to work out for me. I'm like, this is going to be the beginning of something like that. Oh man, I have to play with my such and such. I'll be out in the world, I'll be just by myself, I'll be doing my work. And I finally focus on being creative. But something terrible happened. I was not expecting it all. It's such a huge blow. It's happened uh, earlier this year, it's uh, December 4th, uh, it was just a huge blow, but I wasn't able to do my medical because I was medical, so uh, there's just something wrong with me. they found out that it was a sort of protein that was but I didn't know I was doing it. have I ever seen a bed so I don't know how I do It's crazy. Might be on a I am. It's not a close chapter in my life. I came back, like I said, I came back. I went to She was coming out, but she stopped coming out. She got here. The reason why I'm here today is I was kind of like checking out the scene I'm sorry to overhear, uh, but nice to meet you. My name is Aito. Thank you for being here. And I'm sorry for your loss. Um, really quick, I just want to. Hey everybody, uh, one last thing, we want everybody to yeah, just pass around. And then whoever got to Wendell and not keep them close. How are you guys? How are y'all doing out there? All right, you guys. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. I didn't realize some support for the family. As many of the press know out here, that uh, this family is not alone, not only in the loss of their loved ones. Did you see all these pictures here? All these people here are victims of the APD. And there's a number of them. And you see right here, Wendell and Rakim Rux, Wendell Celestine and Rakim Rux. Both of them were asphyxiated. And that was uh, Wendell in 2016, Rakim in 2015. 
Chief Brooks is a lifetime uh, Antioch Police Department. He knows these cases. He knows these guys were asphyxiated. And he knows what's happening here at this home today, uh, Christmas Eve. And that's why they are not um, speaking out and they're trying to keep it secret. We want, um, I myself too, I don't want to get in my own case, but I also was a victim of a chokehold and luckily uh, I have survived. They're using this method and technique all the time. Um, Catherine Wade right here has a picture of Officer Brogdon. Officer Brogdon with his knee on her son's neck. They're using this all the time in Antioch. And never got off my son's neck throughout the whole situation. And two years later, one year later, Officer Brogdon knee in Raheem Rutt's neck, who's my cousin, and he died at the hands of Antioch police. And so oh, we're all here today, um, the activist community from Antioch, to let the family, the Quinto family know that we're not going to let them be alone. And when they're ready, and uh, we, when they're ready to speak up to the police and to the city hall, we want to stand with them, beside them. So uh, watch for us in the future. Does anybody else want to say something before I let them go? Um, we're there for you guys. We're all here for you. Hello, everyone. My name is Shikupa Khan, and I am a community activist that has lived in Antioch for my entire life. The Antioch police has continuously harassed community members, has continuously hurted our community, and has now hurt another family. Murdered a family. Enough is enough. And the annual police department has lacked accountability for years now. They say that they care. They say that they want to help the community, but all they do is hurt families. All they do is kill innocent people. We are here with the family. We will continue to support the family. Enough is enough. No more deaths. No more. It hurts right. our community. And your police, if you guys are watching, shame on y'all. Shame on you. Look at the family. They are hurting. They lost a son. They lost a brother. How can you do this? We are not going to allow this. We are not tolerating this anymore. We stand with Angelo Quinto, uh, Angelo Quinto. Quinto's family, and we will fight for them. Keep fighting. Let's keep organizing, and let's demand change because enough is enough. APD, watch out. Power to the people. Uh, hey y'all, um, I'm Isaac. Um, there's mourning in Antioch. There, are, there is a family who is hurting. This is a, this is not just an issue for the sake of Antioch. Not just an issue for the sake of Contra Costa or California. This is for the sake of human life. A powerful young man was just lost, and the family is hurting, and yet. There is no response from the city of Antioch, the Antioch Police Department, because they continue to do these acts of bloodshed. It is disgusting. How many more innocent people must be murdered for our police department to be held accountable and be transparent within their community? How many more people must be innocently murdered until the city of Antioch actually does reasonable reform? And as a person who also struggles with mental illness and is in solidarity with the family, how many more people have to be innocently murdered when we no longer have to be afraid of the officers that are supposed to serve and protect us, yes, the community, yes. neighbors, families, when we're already afraid of ourselves? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
can please. And I will always feel this will always be my biggest regret. And um I'm always going to feel guilty for bringing that to him. But it's not my fault, it's not that's right. Not your fault. Not your fault. I'm the only one who's had to feel this way because of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it, everyone. Thank all of you for coming. But it's not as much. It's not a great way. All of you, your family, uh, really, uh, now just Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.